<laughs> What's up everybody? This is Beast for Build. I'm Chris. We're back working on the Lotus Evora. It's a front end teardown episode that is in store for you folks at home. Um, we need to take a bunch of this mangled metal off of here. We need to take all the broken components off of here and catalog those di and uh, diagram and, and document filming a documentary of where those things were so we can make sure to buy new ones and put them on there or fabricate new ones and put them on there. I don't want to get my front bumper and just slap it on here and be like, I have no idea how this is supposed to be attached. Uh, you can't see that piece of metal down there, but I think it's that one. Anyway, so we're pulling mangled metal off. Also, we need to be looking at the radiator. The radiator was out of all of its little mounts. We need, we're not going to be redoing those mounts yet because we have the frame rail needs to be done before that. But I do want to get the radiator to hold water and make sure it's functional. So hopefully in the next episode, we can crank on this engine and give it a test run. Because it's good to make sure your car starts and runs well before you do everything. Learn that on the plan A. Yeah, see, we're learning. So that's what's in store for this episode. Stay tuned. All right guys, so what I'm doing here is I've uh, got one of my little GoPros out and rather than just taking pictures of everything, I like to kind of just take one large video that I can always go look back at. Um, sometimes it'll help catch more angles and you can do things like jump under the car and point cameras around. It's really helpful. And this is just for me to where if I get stuck later on and I go, well, where's that part or what did that do or where did that go? This is my little record of it. And then after we do this, we're just pretty much ready to get started on pulling stuff apart. All right, well, it's time to get started. This looks like a real fun place to start with all this mangled metal and stuff that I get to get out of here. So I'm just going to get to it. It's going to be a lot of uh, taking out screws and drilling out rivets, it looks like. So I'm excited. Transformation time. So our radiator is a little bit tied to the AC condenser that's on the front here. Um, the bracket has bent around the condenser, kind of around the back, so I'm trying to get it off without doing too much damage to the lines. Here we go. I think I can just kind of shimmy it off here. All right, and we're free. Now, I was under there and I saw something that looks like real bad news. What a random, I hope you guys can see that. What a random spot to punch a hole in the bottom of a radiator. This is like a really good looking radiator other than that. So it's a super bummer that it's just got a hole smack dab in the bottom right there. I could easily plastic weld that or fix that, but this is just not the car to do a hack on, so. That's a bummer. I gotta buy a new one of these. Luckily, it looks like it's probably something that they put on a lot of other cars. So, it's probably like a Ford part or something I can get around here. All right, well, let's do a little looking around after we've got everything kind of taken off of this side. So, um, right here, you're gonna see the bracket that uh, I believe was used to hold on the front bumper bracket, which is down there now. And it's, it's just a wrecked wrecked piece. So that bracket held uh, onto the front um, bumper bracket. I believe that's what it was. And then it kind of, uh, by the side of that, there's two bolts that went into that frame rail that held onto that um, part of the AC system. The AC system is charged, so that's a bit of a bitch because we have some kinked lines. Like you can see that line right there is kinked. We have uh, plenty of lines that are going to need to be replaced. Um, not plenty. I, I don't know. Three or four. Three, two, I don't know, a couple. So that's kind of a bummer. So under here, there's gonna be a lot of metal that you're gonna see. That's from the skid plate that's underneath that's completely folded over. So that's gotta be, that's gotta be fixed. Well, removed and we can rebuild that. It's just a, uh, it's not it's not really a skid plate as much as it is a rock guard and it starts the diffusal, uh, the, the air diffusion. So if you look under there, you can see all of those plates. And this is just the first piece and it's completely folded back. So that'll be part of what I'm trying to remove in this episode. So while we're down here, you can see frame is completely straight. Our subframe, we lucked out completely straight. Those are our radiator mounts that are busted up. They need to be rebuilt. Looks like we got a damaged horn over there, completely smashed. 
So coming back up top, this is our AC condenser. It's in okay shape, it's a little sideways. Nothing too major, um, that could be fixed. No holes in it that I can see so far. Um, and like I said, the AC system is completely pressurized, so um, we do have the problem of how to depressurize it, uh, which may happen off camera, but um, the, for now, uh, anyways, we know that that piece is good because it's pressurized. Um, and here's our other frame rail going back, a little bit of damage down here. So this is the next side that I'm gonna move over to and start stripping parts off of. All in all though, this is uh, nothing's really too unexpected and this is all going really great. It's a bummer that our radiator's toast, but I'm hoping that won't be too expensive of a part. It definitely looks like a part that's a shared part from, from other cars in the world. And I will be patching the bottom of that. I'm going to plastic weld the bottom of that. Uh, not for use on this car, but maybe for use on a different car that um, like a project car or cheap, you know, another 500 challenge car or something like that. Uh, because I, I think once I, if I plastic weld the bottom of that, I think I'll be in good shape. So anyways, I'm excited. We're going to get started on this side. All right, so we were able to pull the oil cooler off. Uh, it is slightly damaged. It's something that I'm gonna be looking to replace. So this uh, side was damaged. Now this is something I'll probably, again, like the other part, I'll probably keep and use on a different car because it's kind of cool. It's, it's not actually leaking, but what you can see there is that channel right here that holds fluid. That is pretty badly smushed. And it's just one of those things where it's okay now, but you know, if it were to go out while I'm daily driving this thing around, that'd be a real big bummer. And uh, not to mention embarrassing, cruising around in my budget supercar and on the side of the road with a no oil pressure. So I'm gonna be like, this is not a complex part. This really shouldn't cost me too much money as well as I can get any oil cooler that's roughly the same size with the same inlet and outlet size and just weld my own brackets on there if I need to. But I'll be, uh, I'm gonna take a picture of that part number and tomorrow I'll be searching around trying to get a replacement for that. Ooh, little radiator fluid's leaking out of here all of a sudden because we pushed everything down. Put that up here. Okay, so now we have um, a clear view onto this bracket that holds the oil cooler and the windshield fluid reservoir, and um, or wiper fluid reservoir, whatever you want to call it. So this bracket is not that badly damaged. It's something I'm going to be looking to keep. Um, I'm going to try and you know repair it in any way, or maybe just reinforce it a little bit, bend it back into shape, and you know. It's, it's not bad, unless it's something really cheap I can get from factory. If it's something I can get really cheap, then of course I'll order a new one, but uh, it's not in that bad a shape, so that's definitely something we could save. So here you have a bracket that holds the oil cooler. I don't know if this is one that actually bolts onto the front bumper as well. And then um, up here are where the headlights bolt in actually, so that's kind of interesting. As for the windshield wiper fluid reservoir, I'm just gonna delete that. The pump's broken, I believe. Um, so I'm just gonna delete that for now. It's something I can come back in after I've daily driven this thing for a while and add it back in. I don't really need it. I've daily driven cars without them before. Um, I think on my charger right now, mine just broke and I just never use it anyways. So I don't think it's street legal to run without one, but no one will know. It's not something the cops test. So that's the plan for this. So I'm gonna continue to uh, break this thing down and take that uh, coolant reservoir, not coolant, sorry, the, the wiper fluid reservoir off of there. So while I was down here, I've been uh, removing different things. I got the water, uh, the, the windshield wiper reservoir removed and other stuff like that. And I saw this and this is kind of interesting and I don't know what it is. So if anybody knows online, it could let me know in the comments. Um, no need to email me, just let me know in the comments. I'll, I'll, I'll find it. Um, what this is, this is on the back. And then inside there's this little chip. It looks like there's a wire that leads to it and there's three wires in there. There's a, a hot, a ground and probably a switching wire little chipboard nothing on here really and then it goes into this it looks like a speaker and this is the other side and on here it just says lotus evora 
it just looks like this and uh, I, I don't know what it is um, I, I, I'm assuming I don't need it um, it's mine's busted I probably don't want to replace it and I don't I definitely if it's a speaker I definitely don't need a speaker on the front of my car so I'm curious what that is if anybody knows um, let me know that would be great to know uh, it could be yeah you know what I have no idea what it is this is a horn that looks like a horn there's a matching horn on the other side that all makes sense to me that one does not make sense to me I don't know what that is so other than that, it's all been kind of coming off as planned. There's the bracket that holds the reservoir. There's the bracket that mounts it onto the car. Whoops, sorry, it's right here. Um, that's pretty damaged. Probably be building a new one of those. Um, and then I need to continue removing some of this sheet metal. That's gonna be a job for tomorrow. I'm gonna pack it in for tonight. But we got more damaged sheet metal under there that needs to be removed. I'm gonna tidy those wires up and bring them back up there. And then I'm gonna be pulling off of this uh, damaged under, under tray rock guard thing, water guard rock guard type of thing and that'll all be for tomorrow fun stuff it's actually really fun breaking this car down um, and discovering these little things it's it's a blast so happy i had the opportunity to do it on such an amazing car all right what's up guys back for uh, day two of this front end teardown um i'm i've uh, found some stuff down here so right here we have our transmission cooler it's a little loop um and it's in pretty bad shape so that's another um bad news Today I did some research on the radiator. A new radiator is $800. So I either need to find a radiator that is the same size and has two top mounts. So if you guys see any radiators online that look similar. So the Evora radiator, um, I don't know the size off the top of my head, but it has two top mounts for the radiator, which is kind of unique. A lot of them have one on the top on one side and one on the bottom, either in the center or on the side. That's pretty standard radiator setup. This has both in the top. So that's gonna be a little bit hard to find. Um, so in this episode, we are going to do a couple different things around the radiator. We're going to um, plastic weld the holes. There's multiple holes. I found out both the studs where that thing mounted in that were made out of plastic broke off the bottom, leaving two holes where they sat. So we're going to plastic weld those just so we can have a temporary, uh, temporary radiator set up for when we want to kick the engine on, we want to have a, a radiator. And then for the long term, um, if I can't find a cheap replacement radiator, uh, what we're going to go ahead and do is actually get some aluminum and replace that whole bottom plastic pan with aluminum and weld one on there. We'll remove all the plastic, we'll rebuild it in aluminum, and then weld it on there uh, watertight. So that will be our replacement if it gets down to that. So I don't know. I, I've done a, very little research, but the ones from factory are like $850. So not going to pay that for a radiator. Um, and then, so we, uh, I'm going to continue the breakdown for right now. Uh, my goal is to remove all this stuff. And, uh, and get the whole front bare, and then um, remove this uh, skid plate as well, and then we'll move on to the radiator. So I'm just gonna get to this part right here. All right, that other side is completely done. It's all cleaned off. There's no more miscellaneous hanging metal or anything like that. So the next thing I'm gonna do is come in here and get this. That'll free up this um, transmission cooler, um, all this mangled metal here, and start to get me ready to find out where I need to make my cut to uh, cut some of this mangled metal off. I'm gonna make a cut real far in. Like I'm gonna include some of the damaged stuff cause I don't wanna, you know, accidentally cut too deep too early until I have a full game plan. But, um, I'm, so I'm gonna uh, remove all this garbage, loosen up this hose area right here so we can kind of get it out of the way. And then we're gonna go ahead and cut this off so we can free up this whole area uh, before we go under and work on that skid plate rock guard underneath. off was a, a big pain in the ass but we did get it off we got it off without damaging any of the uh, good part um, and I've included a lot of the damaged parts so we're really gonna have to come all the way back to here probably when we do our cut so you probably saw me bending on this and you know if this was a piece that we wanted to weld onto obviously you don't want to bend stuff back and forth to snap it off but that's not the case we're gonna be going back you know probably four more inches to get all the way behind the damage before we weld on our extension to mate back up with our crash bar so um, that's all good. We got that bad stuff off. Um, the transmission cooler uh, is done a full kink down here before the connect disconnect. Um, so it's kind of a bummer. So on one side of the, uh, the inlet and outlet, you have a kink on that side. And then over here in the cooler itself, you have a kink right here. So nothing here is salvageable. 
but it is a cool thing like so I just went ahead and cut that and started draining it but and I'll cut this other side right now and pull it off but in the future we can do something cool with a, a custom transmission cooler if we want or you know I could just buy the OEM one again but uh, that's kind of up to us and we can we can uh, so I'll be have to put a, a fitting right here where it's going down and then I could just kind of build it whatever way I want might use some soft lines to make that bend next time uh, so the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and remove this uh, uh, rock guard skid plate diffuser thing. I'm going to jump under there and finish pulling that off. That's really damaged. So I'm going to jump under there, pull that off, and then we're going to move over to the radiator. All right. Well, I got the bottom. Jesus, I got the bottom uh, rock guard skid plate thing off. So you can tell in the wreck it, it tacoed over on itself. So there's like kind of the bottom where it attaches to the car, and this piece used to be up front and have that kind of coating on it and it all folded over. So this piece is totally garbage. Scrap aluminum. And now that that is completely uncovered there, let me show you the uh, the bottom, what we've uncovered. All right, so for the bottom of this car, it's nothing too crazy. You got your ABS system there, uh, your distribution block right there. Um, you're looking at your sway bar that's coming across the front, which is all intact and looks just fine. And then um, you got your steering rack, which I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to show you guys or not. Um, your steering rack's under there. And all that is looking just great. So that's all good. And we're all straight going all the way back, which is also good. Time to move on to that radiator. All right, so here we have our radiator. And these are the two holes that were left by the... So there were... It's pretty poor design of this. There are two posts coming out of the plastic that are the mounts for this. So obviously when the car got impacted, both the posts of these ripped off and um, they're toast now. So um, we have our extra plastic that you get when it comes with your um, plastic welder and this is a little plastic welder. You apply this to this to this and you ooh, and you, uh, you can weld the plastic, you're melting plastic together. So this is gonna be a pretty simple job. The only um, kind of complicated part is I can't let, allow any debris to go into here because then it could theoretically enter my um, radiator system and go through the cooling system of the car, which would be terrible. So I just got to be careful for that. Other than that, I'm good to go. So I'm just going to scrape it up a little bit and get to work. All right, well, that worked out really well. You can see where I went ahead and patched both spots with the plastic weld. It's, uh, it's a little bit hot right now, so it's a little flexy, but it's, it's super strong. Let's see, I can put a bunch of pressure on it and it's not flexing at all. So those holes are totally plugged up. And uh, like I said, I'm not gonna run this, you know, this way uh, in the long term. Um, I'm gonna be looking for either another radiator or we'll build an aluminum piece that goes across here and we'll weld it all the way up. But um, for testing and a little R&D and stuff like that, well not R&D, but just testing and getting this car back in shape, that will do just fine. I can fit in here now. All right guys, well that is the end of this episode. Uh, this was a lot of fun. We had a pretty good breakdown. We learned a lot of good stuff. We found a lot of broken things that we need to start replacing. And you know, we're gonna have to get crafty on some of these things because I don't wanna buy a thousand dollar radiator. That looks no different than the stock E46 radiator, except for kind of where the uh, mount, uh, the, the holes are that go into these guys, the inlet and outlet hoses. So, uh, you know, we gotta get crafty on some of these things. I gotta look for some alternate things. Uh, same is gonna go for the oil cooler. I haven't looked at the price of that, but if it, you know, it's a $400 oil cooler, obviously we'll start thinking outside the box. Transmission cooler is gonna be the same deal. So there's some problems to solve here, but um, nothing that's gonna block us. Uh, in the next episode, we're gonna do a lot of fun stuff. We're gonna get that uh, radiator mounted back up in a temporary spot. We're gonna start looking at how we're gonna fab this. And we're gonna play with the engine a little bit and try and deactivate the immobilizer so I could turn the key and try and start the car and listen to how it runs. So I'm really excited for all that stuff. It's gonna be a really fun weekend playing around with this car. Hey, look, found a drill. Um, thank you guys very much for watching. You can find us at facebook.com slash BS for Build and we are BS for Build on Instagram. You can also find us at BS for Build.com. If you would like to support the shop, go there, scroll down to the shop. Did I say like to support the shop? If you'd like to support the channel, use the shop. Go to beastforbuild.com, scroll down to the shop. You can find all of our merchandise on, on there and that is how you can support the channel. We don't have a Patreon, although I'm thinking about getting one. But uh, for now, if you wanna help support, just buy anything on there. We got really cool key tags. We have these shirts. These are limited edition shirts of the E46 that we just ran in the uh, Morgan 500-500, which was a blast. And these shirts are really cozy and really fun and uh, they're good to work in because you know if you get grease on them or something you can't see and it, it just washes right out and they're super comfortable so 
Uh, we got hats, we got all sorts of great stuff on there. Go out there, check it out if you want to help support the channel. Thank you guys all so much that have already supported the channel. Other than that, that is it. Please remember to like and subscribe. Thank you guys very much. Peace.